Hello and welcome to my screencast on introductory ecology. This screencast has been produced as part of the uh, beginning of outcome two of unit one for the VCE biology course. Fundamentally, ecology is all about studying ecosystems. Ecosystems are made up of uh, a whole set of interactions between all of the things within that local environment or within that local set of similar conditions. Those things will include the biotic and the abiotic factors within that environment, uh, the biotic being the living or once lived, or the abiotic would be things that have never lived. In this particular picture, we can see that abiotic factors would be things like uh, the sunlight and the temperature. Uh, if I just circle those, we've got sunlight at the top here. And we also have things like the soil types and the water itself. The biotic factors would be the plants and the animals and even the microorganisms in the soil and in the water. Ecology looks at the interaction of all of these various things um, and how they affect each other and uh, what things are able to survive and what things are not. Ecology can look at life on different scales. It can involve uh, things as large as a biosphere or look right down to the level of the individual. If we look at the... Um, the, this list of uh, varying uh, levels of organisation, the further up the list we go, the more complexity we're going to see within those systems that are being observed. There will also be different interactions within each of these spheres of uh, observation, um, but we'll look at those in subsequent slides. The largest level of organization that we'll be looking at is the biosphere and the biosphere as, as the name would imply is the entire planet. It involves all of the different environments within that planet and in some cases will be broken down into different sets of uh, conditions. If we look at the picture in the slide here, we can see that we have a, a range of different uh, uh, spheres within the biosphere itself. The atmosphere, not surprisingly, is the gaseous part, the gases. The ecosphere is all of the living parts of that planet. That's the plants and the animals and right down to the microorganisms. The hydrosphere is the water part. And then finally we have the lithosphere. Lithosphere is the rock, the solid part of the planet. If you put the whole lot together, you have the biosphere. And this covers everything from uh, really the very bottom of the oceans to the top of the atmosphere, the entire area in which life is able to live. Now, variations in the abiotic conditions across the planet will lead to variations in which life forms can survive in those areas. The most important abiotic conditions would be the amount of light and heat that we see in different parts of the world. In this particular picture, we're only considering uh, land-based um, ecosystems, and this, this picture doesn't take into account uh, marine or even fresh water. Most of this is broken down into climatic areas. We can see that some areas are tropical and evergreen, and some areas would be temperate deciduous, and some areas would even be uh, tundra. And this all relates to the different plants that are able to grow under those conditions. And the plants that grow in those conditions then determine the animals that are able to survive there as well. So a, a biome is really just a way of breaking down the uh, biosphere into uh, manageable chunks so that we can then categorize the different life forms that we see within it. Ecosystems are much more localized again. Um, they involve the interaction between the living and the non-living, the biotic and abiotic uh, factors within that uh, local area. 
they tend to uh, be generally named after one of the major constituents of that ecosystem. Um, in this part of the world, uh, in northern Victoria, we see a lot of Mallee ecosystems, Mallee being one of the dominant plants. Uh, you might also see ecosystems that are dominated by eucalyptus or maybe some in America you might see spruce or aspen um, ecosystems depending on which plants are growing. How much detail a, an ecosystem like this is studied in really comes down to the, the scientist involved. It may be possible not just to look at, say, a whole Mali ecosystem, but to perhaps just focus on the ecosystems immediately around waterholes or on the tops of hills. So it's, it's a very broad topic that's able to be altered to suit the purposes of the study. Going down another layer of complexity, we would now be looking at the community within that ecosystem. It'll generally be named after the ecosystem itself because the community is simply made up of the biotic factors within that ecosystem. So that is all of the living organisms and their, how they interact with each other. The particular picture I have here is a food web um, from a, a typical Australian ecosystem. Um, and really just shows the relationship, the feeding relationship between all of the organisms. But there may be lots of other relationships um, such as uh, pollination of flowers or symbiotic relationships. Focusing still further in and taking a more narrow view from the community, we now look at a population. And the population of uh, a single species within a community so when studying a population, scientists may not include the relationships that this particular species has with its food sources or its predators, but looking more at uh, the relationships that it has with other individuals within that population. And that takes us to our next slide. The individual is really the simplest level that we would go to uh, in ecology. You could divide uh, an individual even further into their systems, organs, tissues and cells, but that's really taking on a whole different level of biology. And ecologists don't tend to look at things in that much detail. They'll tend to pass that sort of thing on to um, cellular biologists. That's not to say that understanding how the systems and organs and tissues of this uh, particular species operate, because those are the things that enable it to survive in its environment. And they would give uh, clues to its evolution and its adaptation to the environment that it finds itself living in. Those are the main layers of uh, an ecosystem that we will be considering, certainly in terms of its level of organisation. Um, I'm just going to touch briefly on a couple of aspects of uh, the food cycle and uh, how they would uh, have a bearing on the ecosystem and the relationship of all of the species within it. Every ecosystem requires autotrophs. Autotrophs, um, literally, it literally translated from the Greek, auto means by itself and troph means feed. So, just give myself a pen here. Uh, auto means to, by itself and troph means feed. So they are self-feeding. That means that they produce their own food. And the other term for them is producers. These are always going to be the things at the very bottom of every food chain. So they are the origin really of all of the food and energy within each um, community. So when we're looking at food chains, these are always going to be the beginning. Um, the usual ones that we see are plants like the uh, lovely slipper orchid we have in this picture, but we also do get some other weird and wonderful ones which may come up in exam questions that unlike most of the plants we see around us, do not use photosynthesis to produce their energy. They use a system called chemosynthesis. So photosynthesis is where light is used to produce energy 
and or food and chemosynthesis is where the chemical bonds within certain um, inorganic substances that surround these particular bacteria um, are broken and that energy that is released is then used to create f food essentially. Um, the chemosynthetic things are generally only found in places like hot springs and um, undersea vents. So they're generally they're going to be bacteria. They're very ancient bacteria usually. The next layer of uh, in a, in a food chain would be heterotrophs. Now hetero means different, and troph means feeding. So this means that heterotrophs feed on something different to themselves. So they basically eat other things. The first layer of heterotrophs that we would see after the producers are things that eat producers. And in most terms, things that eat producers are herbivores. They are things that eat plants. The layer above those, or the, the next step on, on a food chain from herbivores, are things that eat those, and those are carnivores. The one question I always ask my junior students is, what eats a carnivore? And the answer is another carnivore. So once you go past herbivores, you're into carnivores, and then you will have several steps where pretty much everything is a carnivore. The other possibility that we get when we're dealing with heterotrophs is things that will eat both plants and animals. And as we can see in the picture, um, we have Bear Grylls, who it would seem would eat pretty much anything that's put in front of him. And an animal that does that is called an omnivore. Omni means everything. So omnivores eat everything um, within limits. Another form of heterotroph is parasites. Parasites, a good parasite, does not kill the thing which it feeds from. So as Bear Grylls is eating that large grasshopper, he's going to kill it. But if Bear Grylls caught a tapeworm from that grasshopper, the tapeworm does not want to kill Bear Grylls. If it does kill him, then it dies as well. So a successful parasite does not kill its host. The final layer of heterotrophs that we would see would be the decomposers. Now whether or not decomposers are included in heterotrophs is uh, a subject for debate. Decomposers feed on generally dead things. Um, they tend, if they are feeding on live things, then they would either be a, a carnivore or omnivore or a herbivore. Um, but generally they are feeding on dead things. When they, have, when they break them down, they then release nutrients, which then goes back to the autotrophs. So decomposers would be things like fungi and bacteria in the soil. One of the things that you can usually guarantee about an ecosystem is that it's going to change. Things very rarely stay the same forever, um, and that's because of a whole different raft of various things that can affect it. Um, the top one here I've got on my list is seismic activity. So if we can see the picture at the bottom of the volcano, it may have been a lovely tropical rainforest on the side of that volcano when it was dormant, but when it erupts, that uh, rainforest will have been flattened and burnt by lava. So there's now a whole new ecosystem uh, where there used to be a rainforest. It's now gone to a, a very strongly um, uh, rock-based uh, ecosystem. So it'll be different species living there under different conditions. Now, human activity can also affect ecosystems, um, not surprisingly. It could be uh, on a very large scale where perhaps a whole wetland is drained and it's gone from being wetland to much drier soil, so different species would live there. Or it may be on a very small scale by doing something as simple as turning over a rock so that that particular little patch of soil is no longer shaded and moist, it's now bright and uh, dry. Climate change, which happens constantly, 
um, it tends to change environments too. It, it wiped out many megafauna species at the end of the last ice age and has wiped out uh, other major species um, uh, many times. There have been quite a few extinction events on this planet due to climate change. On a small scale, uh, if we look at things like the area toward between uh, Nathalia and Shepparton, we can see that there's been fire go through. And fire will have quite a, a significant effect because it uh, alters the amount of uh, dry vegetation that was there, so it will affect the uh, food supply for things like decomposers. It will also affect the... Uh, reproduction of many of the plants that are living in those areas because some of them require heat to germinate their seeds. So there's an enormous variety of different factors that come into play when an ecosystem changes due to any one of these different factors. That brings us to the end of this very brief overview of ecology. Um, thank you for listening. <laughs>